Yo, what is up, loud and proud crowd? I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. We're actually in the barn here with, of course, the nasty red 12 valve Cummins. We've also got Big Stinky and the first gen. Since the last time you guys saw a video on here, which was just, you know, two days ago, of course, all these trucks weren't in here. It was just the first gen, but now we've got Big Stinky in here and we've got Nasty Red in here as well. We could probably fit another if we organized it and got the truck all the way on one side, you know, whatever. But um, anyways, all that aside, I did create a new channel. If you saw that channel yesterday, you guys would know that Big Stinky was in here and actually the Dooley was in here yesterday. But yes, I've created a third channel, not actually fourth, but we're just gonna say third channel. If you just go over there and subscribe, you guys know what it's about. The channel is called Team LNP, so hashtag Team capital capital N, capital P. And basically all Team LNP is for is basically either like today, I'm gonna be taking off the light bar on Nasty Red is what I'm planning on doing and then trying to work and do something on Big Stinky. However, if you guys were wanting to see like more behind the scenes of like some other stuff that I'm doing today, a little bit more about around what I do daily um, off of the truck topic, sometimes related but not always, that's what Team LMP is for. It's kind of like just daily life stuff, sometimes random bonus footage that I collect on my phone if I'm out and about and I take some video and I just want to throw it in somewhere. Um, basically less clean cut, less organized content, but still loud, loud and proud style LNP related stuff if you guys are wanting to watch some of that content as well. So loud and proud has tried to be, I've tried to make this more of like my clean cut, my time, you know, really sewn into the editing and planning out a topic and trying to stick with that topic for a video versus this channel is just kind of be whatever, you know what I mean? Like it could be anything. That's what that's for. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to go subscribe to that channel. I think we hit 1,000 subscribers in the first 10 hours of that channel's existence. So that is absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. So yeah, definitely go down there and subscribe. Leave a link in the description, also down in the comment section for you guys to go and check out. But yeah, so let's get to the topic of today's video and that is getting rid of the light bar on Nasty Red. Wow, it is off. And let me tell you, the first thing I thought when I saw that light bar off the truck, the first thing that it made me think was the truck looks naked. I know it's a weird term for a light bar being off the truck, but that is the first thing that I thought I was like, something is missing now from Nasty Red. And it's gone. So I'm trying to decide what I want to actually do with this light bar. These are second gen brackets, which freaking are expensive. These are like 100 bucks just for the brackets for this thing. So yeah, I mean, a light bar I think is a two, well over $200, I'm pretty sure. And the brackets were 100 bucks. So I mean, you've got a valuable set there. And this thing was only turned on like three times ever when I was on the truck. It's a little dusty from sitting on the truck, but it's still basically a new light bar, you know, that was just put on couple months ago. We were selling record numbers of merch on this channel. Like I'm talking 100 decals a week. I mean, lots of hoodies, lots of t-shirts. We were selling so much merch. It was awesome. It was going great and it really helped move things forward. As soon as I bought that bad boy right there, instantly the merch sales just boom. They just stopped completely. They just cut off almost 100%. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, that kind of sucks. Um, and I know why people are doing it is because you know, they're trying to wait until the giveaway before they spend their money on merch again. So, I mean, I understand, totally get that, but how about we make an exception? Now, I know some people are still gonna be like, ah, I don't know, but let's let's make an exception. We're gonna do a little giveaway with this light bar just to ship this thing out. It's not gonna be cheap. Let's just do a little giveaway with this. So basically, all you're gonna have to do to get entered to qualify, you just gotta buy one Team LNP keychain, link in description, and you have to follow my new channel, which is down in the description below or in the comments. Just subscribe to my new channel and buy one keychain. That's it, that's all you gotta do. Um, if you wanna buy multiple keychains, every keychain will be an entry, we'll just say that. That makes it easy enough for 10 bucks. I don't know how many people are gonna enter, probably only a few, because like I said, everybody's just waiting on that stinking giveaway truck to buy merch. This light bar also comes with a remote. The only thing that it does not come with is a wiring harness. And the reason for that is it is all fished up through this truck and all hooked up and all over the place in there. And that's all you're gonna have to buy. You can get these brackets. I don't know what all trucks these work for. I know for a fact, if you have anything second gen, these brackets work and they're like $100. Yeah, not having to buy those is a huge deal. So pretty much you get a $300 plus package here with the light bar in the brackets and the little Bluetooth remote so you can operate it. 
And then all you have to buy is a wiring harness, which is cheap. They're like, like I said, they're 10 to 12 bucks. I bought a lot of them, I would know. Um, so all you have to do is buy a keychain and subscribe to the other channel. Every keychain you buy is another entry. So knock yourself out. I'm not sure how many people are gonna enter, so it's basically just like I'm just giving giving you a free light bar. Link in description, definitely go grab a keychain, I'll get you entered in on that light bar. Now we're gonna be doing a little bit of something on Big Stinky. Long story short, the idling thing that I was going to work on with Big Stinky actually isn't isn't even an issue. I took that one spring out that was kind of hooked on there. I started up and nothing changed. I idled the exact same way, so I just took that out. But I'm actually working on the AFC housing with Big Stinky. And I know when we go to actually modify this truck, there's going to be different fuel plates and stuff anyways and slightly different adjustments to the AFC housing. However, I've got to figure out how I was going to get the thing out anyway, so when I go to do it again, it's gonna be easier. A little bit of an issue here that we've ran into with the AFC housing. It's off, but I got the top two out, but the bottom two, if you can see those right there, I actually have nuts on the top of them now um, with super glue inside the threads of those nuts. So I'm hoping that once that dries and it cures, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it today. I wanna make sure that it has time to cure. Uh, I'm gonna try to somehow get those things out but basically what happened was I went to take my 10 millimeter wrench or not my 10 mil my 8 mil and loosen those bolts out those real small bolts well as soon as I put pressure on them they just rotated right off they were going left for loose the way they're supposed to as soon as I go to loosen the bolt has just rotated right off them without barely any pressure at all so I go to do the other one I'm like you know just apply pressure apply pressure boom just snaps I'm like what in the heck? That's what I'm trying to do right now is get those studs out. And my only other option, if the super glue thing doesn't work to get the, I got dirt all over my face. The only other option that I have, if this doesn't work, is basically cutting the studs off flush somehow. I don't know what I'm gonna use to get down in there. Um, but somehow trying to cut them down flush or drilling them out and then re-threading it a little bit different size. We have a, I think it's called a tap and die set, if it comes down to that, which I'd rather not. Tamper proof that you're supposed to take out so you can get the FC housing off. Look at that thing all marred up. I mean, that thing was a pain in the butt. This one took me about an hour to get out, just that one. And then the other two, of course, they just broke right off, figures, and then uh, the fuel plate came out no problem. There wasn't any issues with the fuel plate, which is all stock. The AFC housing on this thing has never been touched. All these years, it's never been tampered with. So, it's sometimes good and bad. Uh, it's a good feeling to know that it wasn't messed with, but it's also kind of sucks then, you know, it's the first time those things have broke loose in, you know, 20 some years, and then they just, you know, whatever. Just makes it a little less fun when you have to be the first to mess with that after so long. What I'm basically gonna do is shave my fuel plate down to a zero, which is just basically taking that, and you just cut that fuel plate the lighting is awful right now. If you just take that fuel plate and you cut it straight down with that top half how it's flat, you just cut it straight down there. So I'm just gonna put it on the grinder and grind it till it's flat. It's always the smallest thing that holds up a project. And I, I hate I hate that about some projects. It's like, you just kinda have to go into it expecting it. But it's like when it's such an easy job, it's like, come on, it's, it's such an easy job to have an issue like this. It just sucks when it's like a 20 minute job that takes, you know, 10 hours, it just, it's not fun. If I come across as a little bit frustrated, I still am a little bit from that whole deal over there with the AFC housing and those bolt heads just rotating right off. I took off the top plate here and I took the diaphragm in there, I took it off. There's a 10 millimeter nut in there. You have to loosen out and then you can take this little diaphragm off. And there's like a spaced out washer with a little bit of a lip on it, about yay big on the back side. And I took that and I flopped it and then I took the flat washer that was on the back and I put that on the inside. So I just kind of flopped them in there. That's how most guys do these AFC housings. And then I took my star wheel. I took this hex head out here um, with an Allen key. And I just turned it up about, I want to say a half rotation. Um, so I probably took my little flathead screwdriver and clicked it up, I don't know, 
five, six times. So for the rest of this, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish it today because that Gorilla Glue isn't quite dried. And if it's not dry, there's really no point in me trying to attempt taking off the nuts because it's not gonna help me any if I'm gonna go and rotate and just take the glue right off. So I'm gonna let that dry some more. But this is where we're at right now for the project. Little project I tried to start today and just, yeah, didn't go quite as planned, but what do you know, another day in the shop, I guess. But I did film a video for Team LNP, another video for Team LNP, and I might film another one for that channel today as well. That's all I've really got for you guys on Big Stinky today, unfortunately. Quick thing I wanted to add in here to this video. I talked about doing compound turbos on the dually for a long time. That was my plan, long story short, and I know there's gonna be people who are just gonna put all the, th all the blame on me and this, that, and the other. Long story short, it's not gonna work out that way. Can't give you all the details as to why we can't do that anymore. Anyways, I'm in search of an alternative to the compound system, which of course compound system was ideal and it would have suited that truck better, being the dually for like a hauling truck, a pulling truck, a work truck. But I'm going to be in need of a different turbo option for 400 to 450 horsepower range. So if there's anybody out there that has a turbo that is suitable for a second gen 12 valve, that's good for you know, four to 500 horse, give or take in that range. That's a good solid turbo for that. Let me know, message me, I'll leave my email right here on the screen. Preferably email, because I'll probably see that more than anything else. It'll let me know what you have and what you need for it. You guys don't realize this, but I've got so much money wrapped up in this giveaway right now that it's crazy. And right now I just do not have the ability to spend a ton of money on a compound system for that truck. Unfortunately, I just can't do that right now. So if anybody has a turbo out there that they would sell to me for a reasonable price, definitely let me know. And don't forget to go subscribe to that other channel that I created, link in description and down in the comments. And also don't forget to get in on that light bar. It's probably a 300 plus dollar package between the brackets and the light bar. All you have to do is buy a wiring harness, but every keychain that you buy, and I please, please do this. Every keychain that you guys buy gets you an entry. I think there's like 80 some keychains available. So it's not just an unlimited thing. There's That means that there cannot be more than 80 people that enter. So anyways, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new. Join the team, join the family, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.